our world and beyond. Space, in partnership with the European Space Agency. I think it's the time you spend on such a spacecraft. You've seen the real one, you see the, the copy here, and you think that the real one is actually now flying in the middle of nowhere, so far away from anything. It's extremely emotional and, uh, yeah, it's more than a machine for sure. So what is it if it's more than just a machine? In the operations center of ESA, the European Space Agency in Darmstadt in Germany, there's an exact replica of the Rosetta space probe. The real one is currently 375 million kilometers away from Earth, using energy from its 14 meter long solar panels to power its flight. It's a, a copy of the real spacecraft. It is fully functioning, so whenever we do some operation or we plan to do an operation on the real spacecraft, we have the possibility to try it first on the, on the tool on ground. And we can also use it for uh, uh, troubleshooting. Uh, in case there is a problem with the flying spacecraft, we try to reproduce it on ground to understand it better. It's uh, fantastic for such a long mission like uh, Rosetta. And it is a long mission. Launched by ESA in March 2004, the aim of the Rosetta and its little 100 kilo landing craft is a comet more than 600 million kilometers from Earth. It's due to arrive there in 2014, but en route, the Rosetta is studying other space phenomena like asteroids. We fly by at an extremely high velocity, 15 kilometers per second, relative velocity, but the navigation has to be very accurate. So we, we really use optical navigation, we use uh, radiometric uh, data, and we, we exercise these techniques for the moment that we will be at the comet and we will do this every day. The mission aims to study the Lutetia asteroid. It will fly past it at a distance of 3,000 kilometers so that the 11 scientific instruments on board can gather data about this flat, 100 kilometer long asteroid. Rosetta looks into detail on this asteroid. It will look into what the composition of this asteroid is, what the size of this asteroid is, and with this, what the density of this asteroid is. This is a measurement that is very difficult to perform and can only be performed by space missions. The oldest observatory in Italy, the Osservatorio Astronomico di Capodimonte, is here in Naples. It dates from the 19th century, but there's nothing old-fashioned about the research being carried out here. They're holding a seminar on Giada, the instrument which is on Rosetta's landing craft, the lander, and which analyzes the dust from the comets. Comets are bodies in our solar system that have been left over ever since the solar system formed, some 4.5 billion years ago. And therefore, when we look into comets, we look into the past of our solar system. And so by investigating the details of comets, how they formed, how they evolved, we can actually have a glimpse into how our solar system formed and in the end, how the Earth formed and why we are here. Rosetta only has small motors for steering its flight. To get to its final destination, the Shuryumov gerasimenko comet, more than 600 million kilometers from Earth, the flight engineers at ESOC in Darmstadt use the gravitational sling effect from planets like Mars or the Earth to accelerate the probe as it orbits them. When you want to rendezvous with a comet, you have to accelerate the spacecraft and match the same velocity that the comet has around the Sun. So this is the problem, not only the distance but also the velocity. You fly close to a planet and uh, you use the gravitational attraction of the planet to actually accelerate your spacecraft. In 2014, Rosetta will orbit the shuryumov gerasimenko comet, which is four kilometers long. The maneuver is complex because the gravity of the comet is only a millionth of that of the Earth. The lander will then be launched. First, we, we arrive at the comet. We have to approach it very carefully characterize it, which means learning what is its gravitational potential, how does a surface look like. 
is there any gas or dust jet that we have to avoid? All this has to be done in a few months in the, between the springtime and the autumn of 2014. Landing means flying very, very slowly over the comet and then gently pushing away the lander. It's not a landing like you can imagine on the moon where you come with rockets and you have to break. Here the problem is the opposite. The, you have to really touch gently the comet. The forces involved are very small. The probe will remain in orbit while the lander is on the comet's surface. They will follow as the comet approaches the sun and as it takes the recognizable shape of a comet, a ball surrounded by an aura called a coma with a tail streaming out behind it. closer to the sun, it will be heated by the sun and the gases and the water will evaporate and build the atmosphere. And so it becomes active and in the end it will have the coma and the tails that we know of comets when they are close by. And we will look into how this activity develops. We also know that there are some organic macromolecules, so really big, big molecules, which may be precursors of the molecules that are needed for getting life, for uh, having life developed. These scientists have invested their entire professional lives in this 30-year-long project. On Earth, they're surrounded by the evidence of the past. In space, they're studying future events. When the mission is done, I will be almost retired. So it will be my only space mission over my entire life. And Apart from being very excited about it, it's also kind of the work of my life. So I hope that everything will go well. Eventually, both Rosetta and the lander will be put out of action by the dust emitted from the comet as it passes the sun. And then they will both stop working. There was a moment where my father was visiting me and Rosetta was behind the sun in that moment. So yes, yeah, was flying. We, we hardly could contact it. And I was in, in, in the street, I looked at the sun, it was a bit covered by clouds, and I told my father, you know, Rosetta today is behind the sun. And in that moment I felt dizzy, I thought, it cannot be, it's impossible. Yeah? Uh, Rosetta, nothing is behind the sun. Every morning, when you come here and you have the first signal from the spacecraft, you think, it's unbelievable. Yeah? <laughs> But before Rosetta dies and falls onto the comet forever, scientists hope they will have gathered enough data to understand the life cycle of a comet, a key which they hope will unlock some of the mysteries of our own planet, Earth.